Hello friends, welcome back. The topic that we are going to study today is relations. Okay, and the last time we have studied sex. So what you can do is that after studying this relation, you can always correlate sex and relations. Okay, so relations um, and uh, all the basics that you know. Okay, we are going to extend all those basics, and we need to study here only the major thing that is the type of relations because. This is the point of confusion that the, most of the students have. So, let's start with types of relations. Now, there are only five types of relations, five very simple types of relations that you need to study. Relations is a pretty simple chapter, and if you study all these types of relations, then it's over. Oh. So, first type of relation is identity relation. Now, what is this identity relation? The definition says that every element is related to itself only. That means what? Suppose if there is a set A which contains 1, 2 and 3 as its elements, then a relation that is defined on A, if the relation says that the ordered pairs are 1, 1, 2, 2 and 3, 3, then again this is the relation is according to this definition. That means every element is mapping with itself only and only. If one is not mapping with 2 or 3, one is mapping with 1 only. So that means every element is mapped with itself only. That means this relation is identity relation. The mapping is done with the identical element only. That's what we mean by identity relation. So the second type of relation that we come to is the reflexive relation. Reflexive relation is more over the same as identity relation. What it says, it says that every element is related to itself. There is no only term here. There is an only term here, but there is no only term here. That means what? It can relate to itself, but then afterwards it can relate to other elements as well. For example, 1, 3 and 2, 3. This can happen. Now suppose that if if A is 1, 2, 3, 4, then if I if, if you if you are defining a relation like this that contains 1, 1, 1, 2, 2, 2 and 1 comma 4. So this is not an identity relation because 4 is not mapped with 4. But if I include a 4 comma 4 ordered pair then this relation is an identity relation. But if I am not including this then this is not an identity relation because 4 is not mapped with 4. So it is important that each and every element has to map with itself first and then it can map with other elements. Okay. So identity relation, reflexive relation, moreover they are same. Don't confuse with the names. Okay, identity that means strictly identity. Reflexive that means it is reaching to the same element and then it is going to other elements. Now symmetric relation. What do we mean by symmetric relation? Symmetric relation says that if there is an A relation B and if there is a B relation A, then they have to be equal. That means what? Suppose if there is an A relation B. So what is the ordered pair forming? The ordered pair that would form will be A comma B. And then the other, other ordered pair from B relation R is formed that has to be B comma A. That means that suppose if 1 comma 2 is an ordered pair forming, where 1 is from set A and B is from 2 is from set B, then there has to be one more ordered pair that has to be formed, 2 comma 1 where this is 2 is from set A and 1 is from set B. Now if we reverse, if we write this is A relation B, if we write B relation A, then it is same. Why? Because I can write here 2 comma 1 as well because 2 is in B and A is in 1. I can write here 1 comma 2 as well because 1 is in A as well and B in B there is 2 as well. So because B contains 2 and 1 and A also contains 1 and 2, so A relation B and B relation A are equal here. So this is the symmetric relation. That means the ordered pairs that are forming, they are symmetric. If A comma B is forming, then B comma is also there. Now so that means my set A was what? My set A is 1 comma 2 and my set B is again 1 comma 2. Now, if this is thing, now this is the domain and this is the range for A relation B. Now domain and range are equal. B, B relation A, this is domain and this is range, again domain and range are equal. And if this is R, then R inverse is what? R inverse is B relation A. So R and R inverse are actually equal. 
you can see R and R is inverse are equal. Now, a relation, symmetric relation defined on A itself can be like this: one comma two, two comma one, one comma one. That means they are mapping to the symmetric pairs: one comma two and two comma one. So these are the symmetric ordered pairs. One comma one is always symmetric. Okay, there is no point. Now, after symmetric relation, we come to transitive relation. Now understand what is transitive relation. If A relation B is there, that means if there is an ordered pair forming A comma B with this relation. If same relation is also relating B and C, that means if there is an ordered pair forming B comma C. So these two ordered pairs belong to a relation. Now there has to be an ordered pair which says A comma C. That means that this relation is also including this A and C as an ordered pair. Now actually what is happening C by this right now? A is related to B by relation, B is related to C by relation. If these two ordered pairs are these two ordered pairs are present, if there is an ordered pair that is relating A to C, that means if A comma B is there and B comma C is there, A comma B and B comma C is there. If there is an ordered pair A comma C as well, that means this diagram is true because A related to B, B related to C, and then A is also related to C directly. So, if these three ordered pairs are present, then our relation is called as transitive relation. Transitive relation that means A is directly related to C, A to B, and then B to C, and then we are directly going from A to C. So, this is transitive relation. We are transiting from A to B, B to C, and directly from A to C. So, I think this diagram suffices all the things. Now, one last type of relation is equivalence relation. What does equivalence relation say? It's very simple. You need to check for reflexive relation, symmetric and transitive. If there is a relation and if you want to see that whether this relation is equivalence or not, check that relation for that whether it's an equivalence it's reflexive, is it symmetric or is it transitive. If a relation is reflexive, symmetric and transitive, if the relation is reflexive also and symmetric also and transitive also at the same time, then that relation is called as equivalent relation. That means if condition number 2, 3 and 4 are true for a relation, then that relation can be called as equivalence relation as well. Obviously it is reflexive as well, it is symmetric as well, it is trans transitive as well. So if all these three conditions are true, then there is a new name given, that means it is an equivalence relation. Now an example for equivalence relation is that, suppose if there is a relation between x and y, I can say that x equal to y. That means identity relation is an equivalence relation as well. Because identity relation is symmetric as well. Okay. Oh sorry, reflexive relation is symmetric as well. Okay. Because it's transitive as well. It is reflexive and it is symmetric. So x equal to y. Okay, that means identity relation. Now this is it for relations. These are the major types of relations that we need to study. Uh, the next topic that we are going to study is functions. Stay tuned and keep watching for more videos.